the Prashna Upanishad. May we hear only what is good for all. May we see only what is good for all. May we serve you, Lord of love, all our life. May we be used to spread your peace on earth. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Question 1. Sukesha, Satyakama and Gargya, Kusalya, Bhargava and Kabindi, who were all seeking self-realization, approached with love sage Pipalada for his guidance on the spiritual path. The sage told them, Live with me for one year, practicing sense restraint and complete trust. Ask me questions at the end of the year, and I will answer them if I can. After a year, Kabandi asked the sage, Master, who created the universe? The sage replied, The Lord meditated and brought forth prana with rai, the giver of name and form, male and female, so that they would bring forth innumerable creatures for him. Prana is the sun, Rai is the moon, matter is solid, matter is subtle, Rai therefore is present everywhere. The sun gives light and life to all who live, east and west, north and south, above, below, it is the prana of the universe. The wise see the Lord of love in the sun, rising in all its golden radiance to give its warmth and light and life to all. The wise see the Lord of love in the year, which has two paths, the northern and the southern. Those who observe outward forms of worship and are content with personal pleasures travel after death by the southern path, the path of the ancestors and of Rai, to the lunar world, and are born again. But those who seek the self through meditation, self-discipline, wisdom, and faith in God travel after death by the northern path, the path of prana, to the solar world, supreme refuge beyond the reach of fear and free from the cycle of birth and death. Some look upon the sun as our father who makes life possible with heat and rain and divides time into months and seasons. Others have seen him riding in wisdom on his chariot with seven colors as horses and six wheels to represent the whirling spokes of time. The wise see the Lord of love in the month. Rai is the dark half, Prana the bright. The wise worship in the light of wisdom, others in the darkness of ignorance. The wise see the Lord of love in the day. Rai is the dark night, prana, daylight. Those who use their days for sexual pleasure consume prana, the very stuff of life, but mastered, sex becomes a spiritual force. The wise see the Lord of love in all food, from food come seed, and from seed all creatures. They take the lunar path who live for sex, but those who are self-controlled and truthful will go to the bright regions of the sun. The bright world of Brahman can be attained only by those who are pure and true, only by those who are pure and true. Question 2. Then Bhargava approached the sage and asked, Master, what powers support this body? Which of them are manifested in it? And among them all, which is the greatest? The sage replied, The powers are space, air, fire, water, earth, speech, mind, vision, and hearing. All these boasted, we support this body. But prana, vital energy supreme over them all, said, Don't deceive yourselves. It is I, dividing myself fourfold, who hold this body together. But they would not believe these words of prana. To demonstrate the truth, 
Prana arose and left the body, and all the powers knew they had to leave as well. When Prana returned to the body, they too were back. As when the queen bee goes out, all the bees go out, and when she returns, all return. So returned speech, mind, vision, and hearing. Then the powers understood and sang this song. Prana burns as fire, he shines as the sun, he rains as the cloud, he blows as the wind, he crashes as the thunder in the sky, he is the earth, he has form and no form, prana is immortality. Everything rests in prana as spokes rest in the hub of the wheel, all the Vedas, all the rituals, all the warriors and kings. O oh, prana, you move in the mother's womb as life to be manifested again. All creatures pay their homage to you. You carry offerings to gods and ancestors and help sages to master their senses which depend upon you for their function. You are the creator and destroyer and our protector. You shine as the sun in the sky. You are the source of all light. When you pour yourself down as rain on earth, every living creature is filled with joy and knows food will be abundant for all. You are pure and master of everything. As fire, you receive our oblations. It is you who gives us the breath of life. Be kind to us with your invisible form, which dwells in the voice, the eye, and the ear, and pervades the mind. Abandon us not. O oh, Prana, all the world depends on you. As a mother looks after her children, look after us. Grant us wealth and wisdom. Question 3. Then Kosalya approached the sage and asked, Master, from what source does this prana come? How does he enter the body? How live after dividing himself into five? How leave the body at the time of death? How does he support all that is without and all that is within? The sage replied, You ask searching questions, since you are a devoted aspirant seeking Brahman, I shall answer them. Prana is born of the self. As a man casts a shadow, the self casts prana into the body at the time of birth, so that the mind's desires may be fulfilled. As a king appoints officers to do his work in all the villages, so prana works with four other pranas, each a part of himself to carry out different functions in the body. The main prana dwells in eye, ear, mouth, and nose. Apana, the downward force in the organs of sex and of excretion. Samana, the equalizing force in the middle, digests food and kindles the seven fires. Viana, distributor of energy moves through the myriad vital currents radiating from the heart where lives the self. At the time of death, through the subtle track that runs upward through the spinal channel, Udana, the fifth force, leads the selfless up the long ladder of evolution and the selfish down. But those who are both selfless and selfish come back to this earth. The sun is the prana of the universe, and it rises to bring light to our eyes. The earth draws the lower fire of apana. The space between sun and earth is samana, and the moving air is viana. Fire is udana. When that fire goes out, the senses are drawn back into the mind, and the person is ready for rebirth. Whatever the content of consciousness at the time of death, that is what unites us to prana, udana, and the self, to be reborn in the plane we have earned. Those who realize this go beyond death. Their children, too, follow in their footsteps. Those who perceive how prana rises, enters the body, and becomes fivefold to serve the self, they die not. They die not. Question 4. 
Then Gargya approached the sage and asked him, Sir, when a man is sleeping, who is it that sleeps in him? Who sees the dreams he sees? And when he wakes up, who in him is awake? When he enjoys, who is enjoying? In whom do all these faculties rest? The sage replied, As the rays of the sun when night comes become all one in his disk until they spread out again at sunrise, even so the senses are gathered up in the mind which is master of them all. Therefore, when a person neither hears, sees, smells, tastes, touches, speaks, nor enjoys, we say he sleeps. Only the fires of prana are burning. Apana is like the holy hearth fire ever burning in the householder's shrine. Bhyana is like the fire that faces south for carrying offerings to our ancestors. And prana is the fire that faces eastward. Samana is the equalizing fire that balances inward and outward breath, the offerings made by the mind. Udana is the fruit of dreamless sleep in which the mind is led close to the self. The dreaming mind recalls past impressions. It sees again what has been seen. It hears again what has been heard, enjoys again what has been enjoyed in many places seen and unseen, heard and unheard, enjoyed and unenjoyed, the real and the unreal, the mind sees all. The mind sees all. When the mind is stilled in dreamless sleep, it brings rest and repose to the body. Just as birds fly to the tree for rest, all things in life find their rest in the self. Earth, water, fire, air, space, and their subtle elements, the eyes and what can be seen, the ears and what can be heard, the nostrils and what can be smelled, the palate and what can be tasted, the skin and what can be touched, the tongue and what can be spoken, the hands and what can be held, the organ of sex and its object of enjoyment, the organ of excretion and what is excreted, the feet and what they walk on, the mind and what it thinks, the intellect and what it knows, the ego and what it grasps, the heart and what it loves, the light and what it reveals, all things in life find their rest in the self, in dreamless sleep. It is the self who sees, hears, smells, touches and tastes, who thinks, acts, and is pure consciousness. The self is Brahman, changeless and supreme. Those who know the supreme self as formless, without shadow, without impurity, know all, gentle friend, and live in all. Those who know the self, the seat of consciousness in whom the breath and all the senses live, Know all, gentle friend, and live in all. Question 5 Satyakama approached the sage and asked, Those who have become established in Aum, what happens to them after death? The sage replied, Aum is both imminent and transcendent. Through it one can attain the personal and the impersonal. Om has three sounds. Those who meditate on Ah come back to earth, led by the Rig Veda, to lead a pure life full of faith and love. Those who meditate on the first two sounds, Ah and U, led by the Yajur Veda, go to the lunar world full of pleasure, from which they come back cloyed to earth again. But those who meditate on A, ah, U, and M are led by the Sama chants to the sun, where, freed from sin as a snake sheds its skin, they see the Supreme Lord who lives in all. These three sounds, when they are separated, cannot lead one beyond mortality. But when the whole mantra, A, ah, U, and M, indivisible, interdependent, goes on reverberating in the mind, one is free from fear, awake or asleep. The Rig Veda brings one to earth. The Yajur escorts one to the region of the moon, 
The Sama leads one to the solar world, to which the sage attains through the mantram. Established in this cosmic vibration, the sage goes beyond fear, decay, and death to enter into infinite peace. Question 6 Then Sukesha approached the sage and said, Master, the prince of Kosala asked me this question once. Sukesha, do you know the self with his sixteen forms? I don't, I replied. If I did, I would certainly tell you, for he who speaks an untruth perishes like a tree without roots. The prince mounted his chariot and went away silent. Now may I ask you, where is that self? The sage replied, Within this body dwells the self with his sixteen forms, gentle friend. The self asks himself, What is it that makes me go, if it goes, and stay, if it stays? So he created prana, and from it desire, and from desire he made space, air, fire, water, the earth, the senses, the mind, and food. From food came strength, austerity, the scriptures, sacrifice, and all the worlds and everything was given name and form. As rivers lose their private name and form when they reach the sea, so that people speak of the sea alone, so all these sixteen forms disappear when the self is realized. Then there is no more name and form for us, and we attain immortality. The self is the hub of the wheel of life, and the sixteen forms are only the spokes. The self is the paramount goal of life. Attain this goal, and go beyond death. The sage concluded, there is nothing more to be said of the self, nothing more. The students adored their teacher and said, you are our father, you have taken us across the sea to the other shore. Let us adore the illumined sages. Let us adore the illumined sages. Om Shanti 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 The Chandogya Upanishad The Wisdom of Chandilya This universe comes forth from Brahman and will return to Brahman. Verily, all is Brahman. A person is what his deep desire is. It is our deepest desire in this life that shapes the life to come. So let us direct our deepest desires to realize the Self. The self who can be realized by the pure in heart, who is life, light, truth, space, who gives rise to all works, all desires, all odors, all tastes, who is beyond words, who is joy abiding, this is the self dwelling in my heart. Smaller than a grain of rice, smaller than a grain of barley, smaller than a mustard seed, smaller than a grain of millet, smaller even than the kernel of a grain of millet, is the self. This is the self dwelling in my heart, greater than the earth, greater than the sky, greater than all the worlds. This self who gives rise to all works, all desires, all odors, all tastes, who pervades the universe, who is beyond words, who is joy abiding, who is ever present in my heart is Brahman indeed. To him I shall attain when my ego dies. So said Shandilya. So said Shandilya. The story of Satyakama. Mother Satyakama said, I feel the time has come for me to go to the home of a spiritual teacher. From whom does our family come so that I might tell him? when he asks my lineage. I do not know, dear, she replied. You were born when I was young and going from place to place as a servant. Your name is Satyakama, and my name is Jabala. Why not call yourself Satyakama Jabala? Satyakama went to Haradrumata Gautama and said to him, Sir, I want to become your disciple. What family are you from, bright one? Sir, I don't know. My mother says she bore me in her youth and doesn't know my ancestry. 
She says that since my name is Satyakama and hers is Jabala, I should call myself Satyakama Jabala. None but a true Brahmin could have said that. Fetch the firewood, my boy. I will initiate you. You have not flinched from the truth. He selected four hundred lean and sickly cows and gave them to Satyakama to care for. I shall not return, the boy said to himself, until they become a thousand. For years Satyakama dwelt in the forest, tending the herd. Then one day the bull of the herd said to him, Satyakama. Sir, he replied, we have become a thousand. Let us now rejoin our teacher's family, and I will tell you one of the four feet of Brahman. Please tell me, revered sir, the boy said. There are four quarters, east, west, south, and north. This is one foot of Brahman, called the Shining. To meditate on these four is to become full of light and master the resplendent regions of the cosmos, knowing this portion of the truth. Agni, fire, will tell you more. The next day Satyakama set out for his teacher's house with the herd. Toward evening he made a fire, penned the cows, and sat by the fire facing east. The fire spoke. Satyakama, Sir, friend, I can teach you another foot of Brahma. Please do, revered sir. There are four quarters, earth, sky, heaven, and ocean. This is one foot of Brahman called without end. Know this, meditate on this reality, and your life will be without end on this earth. A swan will tell you more. The next day Satyakama drove the cows onward. Toward evening he lit a fire, penned the cows, and sat by the fire facing east. Then a swan flew near and said, Satyakama, Sir, friend, I can teach you another foot of Brahman. Please do, revered sir. There are four quarters, fire, the sun, the moon, and lightning. These make one foot of Brahman called full of light. To meditate on this fourfold foot of truth is to be filled with light in this world and master the world of light. A diver bird will tell you more. The next day Satyakama drove the cows onward. Toward evening he lit a fire, penned the cows, and sat by the fire facing east. Then a diver bird flew near and spoke to him. Satyakama, Sir, friend, I can teach you another foot of Brahman. Please do, revered sir. There are four parts, breath, eye, ear and mind. This is one foot of Brahman called established. To meditate on this fourfold foot of Brahman is to be at home in this world and master space. Whoever knows this fourfold foot of Brahman is called established. So Satyakama returned to his teacher's home. Satyakama, his teacher called, you glow like one who has known the truth. Tell me who has taught you. Satyakama replied, No human, sir, but I wish to hear the truth from you alone, for I have heard that only the teacher's wisdom comes to fruition for us. Then his teacher taught Satyakama that same wisdom. Nothing was left out from it. Nothing was left out. The Story of Shwetakitu Shwetakitu was Udalaka's son, when he was twelve, his father said to him, It is time for you to find a teacher, dear one, for no one in our family is a stranger to the spiritual life. So Shwetakitu went to a teacher and studied all the Vedas for twelve years. At the end of this time, he returned home proud of his intellectual knowledge. You seem to be proud of all this learning, said Udalaka, but did you ask your teacher for that spiritual wisdom which enables you to hear the unheard? Think the unthought, and know the unknown? What is that wisdom, father? asked the son. Udalaka said to Shwetakitu, As by knowing one lump of clay, dear one, we come to know all things made out of clay, that they differ only in name and form, while the stuff of which all are made is clay, 
As by knowing one gold nugget, dear one, we come to know all things made out of gold, that they differ only in name and form, while the stuff of which all are made is gold. As by knowing one tool of iron, dear one, we come to know all things made out of iron, that they differ only in name and form, while the stuff of which all are made is iron. So through that spiritual wisdom, dear one, we come to know that all of life is one. My teachers must not have known this wisdom, said Shwetakitu, for if they had known, how could they have failed to teach it to me? Father, please instruct me in this wisdom. Yes, dear one, I will, replied his father. In the beginning was only being, one without a second. Out of himself he brought forth the cosmos and entered into everything in it. There is nothing that does not come from him. Of everything he is the inmost self. He is the truth. He is the self-supreme. You are that, Shritakitu. You are that. Please, Father, tell me more about this self. Yes, dear one, I will, Udalaka said. Let us start with sleep. What happens in it? When a man is absorbed in dreamless sleep, he is one with the self, though he knows it not. We say he sleeps, but he sleeps in the self. As a tethered bird grows tired of flying about in vain to find a place of rest and settles down at last on its own perch, so the mind, tired of wandering about hither and thither, settles down at last in the self, dear one, to which it is bound. All creatures, dear one, have their source in him. He is their home. He is their strength. When a man departs from this world, dear one, speech merges in mind, mind in prana, prana in fire, and fire in pure being. There is nothing that does not come from him. Of everything, he is the inmost self. He is the truth. He is the self-supreme. You are that, Shwetakitu. You are that. Please, Father, tell me more about this self. Yes, dear one, I will, Udalaka said. As bees suck nectar from many a flower and make their honey one, so that no drop can say, I am from this flower or that, all creatures, though one, know not they are that one. There is nothing that does not come from him. Of everything, he is the inmost self. He is the truth. He is the self-supreme. You are that, Shritakitu. You are that. Please tell me, Father, more about this self. Yes, dear one, I will, Udalaka said. As the rivers flowing east and west merge in the sea and become one with it, forgetting they were ever separate rivers, so do all creatures lose their separateness when they merge at last into pure being. There is nothing that does not come from him. Of everything, he is the inmost self. He is the truth. He is the self-supreme. You are that, Shwetakitu. You are that. Please, Father, tell me more about this self. Yes, dear one, I will, Udalaka said. Strike at the root of a tree, it would bleed but still live. Strike at the trunk, it would bleed, but still live. Strike again at the top, it would bleed, but still live. The self as life supports the tree, which stands firm and enjoys the nourishment it receives. If the self leaves one branch, that branch withers. If it leaves a second, that too withers. If it leaves a third, that again withers. Let it leave the whole tree, the whole tree dies. Just so, dear one. When death comes and the self departs from the body, the body dies. But the self dies not. There is nothing that does not come from him. Of everything he is the inmost self. He is the truth. He is the self supreme. You are that, Shritakitu. You are that. Please, Father, tell me more about this self. Yes, dear one, I will, Udalaka said. Bring me a fruit from the Nyaya Grota tree. Here it is, sir. Break it. What do you see? These seeds, Father, all exceedingly small. Break one. What do you see? Nothing at all. 
That hidden essence you do not see, dear one, from that a whole Nyagrota tree will grow. There is nothing that does not come from him. Of everything, he is the inmost self. He is the truth. He is the self supreme. You are that, Shwetakitu. You are that. Please, Father, tell me more about this self. Yes, dear one, I will, Udalaka said. Place this salt in water and bring it here tomorrow morning. The boy did. Where is that salt? the father asked. I do not see it. Sip here. How does it taste? Salty, father. And here and there, I taste salt everywhere. It is everywhere, though we see it not. Just so, dear one, the self is everywhere. Within all things, although we see him not, there is nothing that does not come from him. Of everything, he is the inmost self. He is the truth. He is the self supreme. You are that, Shwetakitu. You are that. Please, Father, tell me more about this self. Yes, dear one, I will, Udalaka said. As a man from Gandhara, blindfolded, led away and left in a lonely place, turns to the east and west and north and south and shouts, I am left here and cannot see, until one removes his blindfold and says, There lies Gandhara, follow that path and thus informed, able to see for himself, the man inquires from village to village and reaches his homeland at last. Just so, my son, one who finds an illumined teacher attains to spiritual wisdom in the self. There is nothing that does not come from him. Of everything, he is the inmost self. He is the truth. He is the self supreme. You are that, Shretakitu. You are that. Please, Father, tell me more about this self. Yes, dear one, I will, Udalaka said. When a man is dying, his family all gather round and ask, Do you know me? Do you know me? And so long as his speech has not merged in mind, his mind in prana, prana in fire, and fire in pure being, he knows them all. But there is no more knowing when speech merges in mind, mind in prana, prana in fire, and fire in pure being. There is nothing that does not come from him. Of everything he is the inmost self. He is the truth. He is the self supreme. You are that, Shwetakitu. You are that. Then Shwetakitu understood this teaching. Truly, he understood it all. This is the end of side three. Please fast forward the cassette to the end and turn over to play side four. The City of Brahman In the city of Brahman is a secret dwelling, the lotus of the heart. Within this dwelling is a space, and within that space is the fulfillment of our desires. What is within that space should be longed for and realized. As great as the infinite space beyond is the space within the lotus of the heart. Both heaven and earth are contained in that inner space, both fire and air, sun and moon, lightning and stars. Whether we know it in this world or know it not, everything is contained in that inner space. Never fear that old age will invade that city. Never fear that this inner treasure of all reality will wither and decay. This knows no age when the body ages. This knows no dying when the body dies. This is the real city of Brahman. This is the self, free from old age, from death and grief, hunger and thirst. In the self, all desires are fulfilled. The self desires only what is real, thinks nothing but what is true. Here, people do what they are told, becoming dependent on their country or their piece of land or the desires of another, so their desires are not fulfilled, and their works come to nothing both in this world and in the next. Those who depart from this world without knowing who they are or what they truly desire 
have no freedom here or hereafter. But those who leave here knowing who they are and what they truly desire have freedom everywhere, both in this world and in the next. Would they see their departed mother or father? Lo, they see them and are happy. Would they see their family and friends? Lo, they see them and are happy. Would they enjoy the world of music, of spring flowers, of elegance? Lo, by their mere will they enjoy these things. Whatever they desire, the object of that desire arises from the power of their own thoughts. They have it and are happy. Here, our selfless desires are hidden by selfish ones. They are real, but they are covered by what is false. Therefore, whoever of our own departs from this life, not one can ever be brought back before our eyes. But all those we love, alive or departed, and all things we desire but do not have, are found when we enter that space within the heart. For there abide all desires that are true, though covered by what is false. Like strangers in an unfamiliar country walking over a hidden treasure day by day, we enter the world of Brahman while in deep sleep but never find it, carried away by what is false. The self is hidden in the lotus of the heart. Those who see themselves in all creatures go day by day into the world of Brahman hidden in the heart. Established in peace, they rise above body consciousness to the supreme light of the self. Immortal, free from fear, this self is Brahman, called the true. Beyond the mortal and the immortal, he binds both worlds together. Those who know this live day after day in heaven, in this very life. The self is a bulwark against the confounding of these worlds and a bridge between them. Day and night cannot cross that bridge, nor old age, nor death, nor grief, nor evil, nor good deeds. All evils turn back there, unable to cross. Evil comes not into this world of Brahman. One who crosses by this bridge, therefore, if blind, is blind no more. If hurt, ceases to be hurt. If in sorrow, ceases sorrowing. At this boundary, night itself becomes day. Night comes not into this world of Brahman. Only those who are pure and self-controlled can find this world of Brahman. That world is theirs alone. In that world, in all the worlds, they live in perfect freedom. The Gods and the Godless The great teacher Prajapati said, The self is pure, free from decay and death, free from hunger and thirst, and free from sorrow. The self desires nothing that is not good, wills nothing that is not good. Seek and realize the self. Those who seek and realize the self fulfill all their desires and attain the goal supreme. The devas and the asuras, the gods and the godless, heard this truth and said, Let us seek and realize the self so that we may fulfill all our desires. So Indra from among the gods and Virochana from among the godless approached Prajapati carrying fuel in their hands as a sign that they wanted to become his disciples. They dwelt with him for 32 years and at the end of that time Prajapati asked why they had stayed with him so long. Indra and Virochana replied, We have heard of your inspiring words. The self is pure, free from decay and death, free from hunger and thirst, and free from sorrow. The self desires nothing that is not good, wills nothing that is not good. Seek and realize the self. Those who seek and realize the self fulfill all their desires and attain the goal supreme. We have been living here as your disciples because we want to realize the self. Pajapati said to them, when you look into another's eyes, what you see is the self, fearless and deathless. That is Brahman, the Supreme. Venerable One, asked the two disciples, what is it we see reflected in the water or in a mirror? It is the self you see in all these, he said to them. Now look at yourselves in a bowl of water and ask me anything you want to learn about the self. They looked at themselves in a bowl of water, 
What did you see in the water? We have seen the self, even the hair and the nails. Put on your best clothes, adorn your body, and look again in the water. We have seen the self, well dressed and well adorned, they replied. That is the self, fearless and deathless. That is Brahman, the supreme. Indra and Virachana went away satisfied, but Prajapati said to himself, They have seen the self, but they have not recognized the self. They mistake the self to be the body. Those who think the self is the body will lose their way in life. Virachana, quite sure that the self is the body, went back to the godless and began to teach them that the body alone is to be saved, the body alone is to be adored. He taught them that whoever lives for indulging the senses will find joy in this world and the next. Even today, people are called godless when they lack faith, love, and charity, because that is the way of the godless. They dress even dead bodies in fine clothes and adorn them with ornaments so that they may enjoy their life in the next world. But Indra, as he was on his way home to the gathering of the gods, began to question this knowledge. If the self is the same as the body, well-dressed when the body is well-dressed, well adorned when the body is well adorned, then the self will be blind when the body is blind, lame when the body is lame, paralyzed when the body is paralyzed, and when the body dies, the self too will die. In such knowledge, I see no value. Again, Indra went back to Prajapati with fuel in hand. Why have you returned, Indra? his teacher asked. Did you not go away quite satisfied? Venerable one, replied Indra, if the self is well dressed when the body is well dressed, well adorned when the body is well adorned, then the self will be blind when the body is blind, lame when the body is lame, paralyzed when the body is paralyzed, and when the body dies, the self too will die. In such knowledge I see no value. You are thinking clearly, Indra, said Prajapati. Live with me for another thirty-two years and I will teach you more of the self. So Indra lived with Prajapati for another thirty-two years. Then Prajapati said to him, That which moves about in joy in the dreaming state is the self, fearless and deathless. That is Brahman, the supreme. Indra went away satisfied, but on his way home to the gathering of the gods he began to question this knowledge. In the dreaming state, it is true, the self is not blind when the body is blind, nor lame when the body is lame, nor paralyzed when the body is paralyzed, nor slain when the body is slain. Yet in dreams, the self may appear to suffer and to be slain. It may become conscious of pain and even weep. In such knowledge, I see no value. Again, Indra went back to Bajapati with fuel in hand. Why have you returned, Indra? the teacher asked. Did you not go away quite satisfied? Venerable one, replied Indra, in the dreaming state it is true the self is not blind when the body is blind, nor lame when the body is lame. Yet in this state the self may still suffer and even weep. In such knowledge I see no value. You are thinking clearly, Indra, said Prajapati. Live with me for another thirty-two years and I will teach you more of the self. Indra lived with Prajapati for another thirty-two years. Then his teacher said, When a person is sleeping soundly, free from dreams, with a still mind, that is the self, fearless and deathless. That is Brahman, the Supreme. Indra went away satisfied, but on his way home to the gathering of the gods, he began to question this knowledge. In the state of dreamless sleep, one is not aware of oneself or any other. The state of dreamless sleep is very close to extinction. In this knowledge, I see no value. Again, Indra went back to Prajapati with fuel in hand. Why have you returned, Indra? His teacher asked. Did you not go away quite satisfied? Venerable one, replied Indra, in the state of dreamless sleep, one is not aware of oneself or any other. The state of dreamless sleep is very close to extinction. In this knowledge, I see no value. 
You are thinking clearly, Indra, said Pajapati. Live with me for another five years, and I will teach you to realize the self. Indra lived with Pajapati for another five years. Altogether, he lived with his teacher for 101 years, which is why people say even Indra had to live with his teacher for 101 years. After that time, Prajapati revealed the highest truth of the self to Indra. It is true the body is perishable, but within it dwells the imperishable self. This body is subject to pleasure and pain. No one who identifies with the body can escape from pleasure and pain. But those who know they are not the body pass beyond pleasure and pain to live in abiding joy. Like the wind, like clouds, like thunder and lightning, which rise from space without physical shape and reach the transcendent light in their own form, those who rise above body consciousness ascend to the transcendent light in their real form, the self. In that state, free from attachment, they move at will, laughing, playing, and rejoicing. They know the self is not this body, but only tied to it for a time, as an ox is tied to its cart. Whenever one sees, smells, speaks, hears, or thinks, they know it is the self that sees, smells, speaks, hears, and thinks. The senses are but his instruments. Worshipping this self in the world of Brahman, the gods obtained all worlds and all desires. Those who know this self and realize this self obtain all worlds and all desires. So said Prajapati. So taught Prajapati. A paean of illumination. From the divine dark to the manifest, to the divine dark, I pass again. As a horse shakes free its mane, I have shaken off all evil. Freeing myself from the bonds of birth and death, as the moon escapes from Rahu's mouth, I have attained the pure realm of Brahman. I have attained the pure realm of Brahman. Brahman is my home. I shall not lose it. Truly, I shall not be lost again. Om Shanti 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 The Isha Upanishad All this is full, all that is full, from fullness, fullness comes. When fullness is taken from fullness, fullness still remains. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. The Lord is enshrined in the hearts of all. The Lord is the supreme reality. Rejoice in Him through renunciation. Covet nothing. All belongs to the Lord. Thus working, may you live a hundred years. Thus alone, will you work in real freedom. Those who deny the self are born again blind to the self, enveloped in darkness, utterly devoid of love for the Lord. The self is one. Ever still, the self is swifter than thought, swifter than the senses. Though motionless, he outruns all pursuit. Without the self, never could life exist. The self seems to move, but is ever still. He seems far away, but is ever near. He is within all, and he transcends all. Those who see all creatures in themselves and themselves in all creatures know no fear. Those who see all creatures in themselves and themselves in all creatures know no grief. How can the multiplicity of life delude the one who sees its unity? The self is everywhere. Bright is the self, indivisible, untouched by sin, wise, eminent, and transcendent. He it is who holds the cosmos together. In dark night live those for whom the world without alone is real. The first leads to a life of action, the second to a life of meditation, but those who combine action with meditation cross the sea of death through action and enter into immortality through the practice of meditation. So have we heard from the wise. In dark night live those for whom the Lord is transcendent only. In night darker still for whom he is imminent only. 
but those for whom he is transcendent and imminent cross the sea of death with the imminent and enter into immortality with the transcendent. So have we heard from the wise. The face of truth is hidden by your orb of gold, O sun. May you remove your orb so that I, who adore the true, may see the glory of truth. O nourishing sun, solitary traveler, controller, source of life for all creatures, spread your light and subdue your dazzling splendor so that I may see your blessed self. Even that very self am I. May my life merge in the immortal when my body is reduced to ashes. O mind, meditate on the eternal Brahman. Remember the deeds of the past. Remember, O mind, remember. O God of fire, lead us by the good path to eternal joy. You know all our deeds. Deliver us from evil, we who bow and pray again and again. Om. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. The Shvetasvatara Upanishad What is the cause of the cosmos? Is it Brahman? From where do we come? By what live? Where shall we find peace at last? What power governs the duality of pleasure and pain by which we are driven? Time, nature, necessity, accident, Elements, energy, intelligence, none of these can be the first cause. They are effects whose only purpose is to help the self rise above pleasure and pain. In the depths of meditation, sages saw within themselves the Lord of Love who dwells in the heart of every creature. Deep in the hearts of all he dwells, hidden beyond the gunas of law, energy, and inertia. He is one. He it is who rules over time, space, and causality. The world is the wheel of God turning round and round with all living creatures upon its rim. The world is the river of God flowing from Him and flowing back to Him. On this ever-revolving wheel of being, the individual self goes round and round through life after life, believing itself to be a separate creature until it sees its identity with the Lord of Love and attains immortality in the indivisible whole. He is the eternal reality, sing the scriptures, and the ground of existence. Those who perceive him in every creature merge in him and are released from the wheel of birth and death. The Lord of Love holds in his hand the world, composed of the changing and the changeless, the manifest and the unmanifest, the separate self, not yet aware of the Lord, goes after pleasure, only to become bound more and more. When it sees the Lord, there comes an end to its bondage. Conscious spirit and unconscious matter both have existed since the dawn of time, with maya appearing to connect them, misrepresenting joy as outside us. When all these three are seen as one, the self reveals his universal form, and serves as an instrument of the divine will. All is change in the world of the senses, but changeless is the Supreme Lord of Love. Meditate on Him. Be absorbed in Him. Wake up from this dream of separateness. The learned say life is self-created. Others say that life has evolved from time. It is the Lord who has brought the cosmos out of Himself. He is pure consciousness, omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, creator of time and master of the three gunas. Evolution takes place at his command. Those who act without thought of personal profit and lead a well-disciplined life discover in course of time the divine principle that all forms of life are one. Those who work in the service of the Lord are freed from the law of karma. Know him to be the primal source of life whose glory permeates the universe, who is beyond time and space and is seen within the heart in meditation. Know that he is beyond the tree of life, he whose power makes the planets revolve, who is both law and mercy and is seen within the heart 
in meditation. Know him to be the supreme Lord of lords, king of kings, god of gods, ruler of all, without action or organs of action, whose power is seen in myriad ways. Know him to be the cause without a cause, without a second, parent, or master. May he, Lord of love, who conceals himself in creatures as a spider in its web, grant us illumination. The Lord is hidden in every heart. He is the eternal witness, beyond the gunas, watching our work from within as pure consciousness. The Lord is the operator. We are but his innumerable instruments, May we, in our consciousness, realize the bliss He alone can give us. Changeless amid the changing, consciousness of the conscious, He grants all our prayers. May we, in our consciousness, realize the freedom He alone can give. Neither sun nor moon nor star nor fire shines. Everything reflects the light of the Lord. May we realize Him in our consciousness there is no other way to conquer death. He is the maker of the universe, self-existent, omniscient, destroyer of death, the source and inmost self of all, ruler of the cycle of birth and death. May we realize him in our consciousness. There is no other way to conquer death. Lord Shiva is my refuge, he who grants freedom from the cycle of birth and death. Lord Shiva is my refuge, he who gave the sacred scriptures at the dawn of time. Lord Shiva is my refuge, he who is the source of purity and perfection. Lord Shiva is my refuge, he who is the bridge from death to immortality. Lord Shiva is my refuge, he whose grace has made me long for his lotus feet. How can we roll up the sky like a piece of deerskin? How can we end our misery without realizing that the Lord of love is enshrined in our heart of hearts? Sage Svetasvatara realized the Lord in meditation through his infinite grace and imparted this highest wisdom to devoted disciples. This highest mystical experience revealed at the dawn of time must be shared only with one whose heart is pure or with a disciple or one's own child. If you have deep love for the Lord of love and for your teacher, the light of this teaching will shine in your heart. It will shine indeed. Om Shanti 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 The Teja Bindu Upanishad Let us meditate on the shining self, changeless, underlying the world of change and realized in the heart in samadhi. Hard to reach is the supreme goal of life, hard to describe and hard to abide in. They alone attain samadhi who have mastered their senses and are free from anger, free from self-will and free from likes and dislikes without selfish bonds to people and things. They alone attain samadhi who are prepared to face challenge after challenge in the three stages of meditation. Under an illumined teacher's guidance they become united with the Lord of Love called Vishnu who is present everywhere. Though the three gunas emanate from him he is infinite and invisible. Though all the galaxies emerge from him he is without form and unconditioned. To be united with the Lord of Love is to be freed from all conditioning. This is the state of self-realization far beyond the reach of words and thoughts. To be united with the Lord of Love, imperishable, changeless, beyond cause and effect, is to find infinite joy. Brahman is beyond all duality, beyond the reach of thinker and of thought. Let us meditate on the shining self, the ultimate reality who is realized by the sages in samadhi. Brahman cannot be realized by those who are subject to greed, fear, and anger. Brahman cannot be realized by those who are subject to the pride of name and fame or to the vanity of scholarship. Brahman cannot be realized by those who are enmeshed 
in life's duality. But to all those who pierce this duality, whose hearts are given to the Lord of love, he gives himself through his infinite grace. He gives himself through his infinite grace. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Amrita Bindu Upanishad The mind may be said to be of two kinds, pure and impure. Driven by the senses, it becomes impure. But with the senses under control, the mind becomes pure. It is the mind that frees us or enslaves. Driven by the senses, we become bound. Master of the senses, we become free. Those who seek freedom must master their senses. When the mind is detached from the senses, one reaches the summit of consciousness. Mastery of the mind leads to wisdom. Practice meditation. Stop all vain talk. The highest state is beyond the reach of thought, for it lies beyond all duality. Keep repeating the ancient mantra, Om, until it reverberates in your heart. Brahman is indivisible and pure. Realize Brahman and go beyond all change. He is imminent and transcendent. Realizing him, sages attain freedom and declare there are no separate minds. They have but realized what they always are. Waking, sleeping, dreaming, the self is one. Transcend these three and go beyond rebirth. There is only one self in all creatures. The one appears many, just as the moon appears many, reflected in water. The self appears to change its location, but does not, just as the air in a jar changes not when the jar is moved about. When the jar is broken, the air knows not, but the self knows well when the body is shed. We see not the self concealed by Maya. When the veil falls, we see we are the self. The mantra is the symbol of Brahman. Repeating it can bring peace to the mind. Knowledge is twofold, lower and higher. Realize the self, for all else is lower. Realization is rice, all else is chaff. The milk of cows of any hue is white. The sages say that wisdom is the milk and the sacred scriptures are the cows. As butter lies hidden within milk, the self lies hidden in the hearts of all. Churn the mind through meditation on it. Light your fire through meditation on it. The self, all whole, all peace, all certitude. I have realized the self, declares the sage, who is present in all beings. I am united with the Lord of love. I am united with the Lord of love. Om. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Paramahamsa Upanishad Narada inquired of the Lord of Love, What is the state of the illumined man? The Lord replied, Hard to reach is the state of the illumined man. Only a few attain it. But even one is enough, for he is the pure self of the scriptures. He is truly great because he serves me, and I reveal myself through him always. He has renounced all selfish attachments and observes no rites and ceremonies. He has only minimum possessions and lives his life for the welfare of all. He has no staff, nor tuft, nor sacred thread. He faces heat and cold, pleasure and pain, honor and dishonor with equal calm. He is not affected by calumny, pride, jealousy, status, joy, or sorrow, greed, anger, or infatuation, excitement, egoism, or other goads, for he knows he is neither body nor mind. Free from the sway of doubt and false knowledge, he lives united with the Lord of love, who is ever serene, immutable, indivisible, the source of all joy and wisdom. The Lord is his true home his pilgrim's tuft of hair, his sacred thread, for he has entered the unitive state. 
Having renounced every selfish desire, he has found his rest in the Lord of Love. Wisdom is the staff that supports him now. Those who take a mendicant's staff while they are still at the mercy of their senses cannot escape enormous suffering. The illumined man knows this truth of life. For him the universe is his garment and the Lord not separate from himself. He offers no ancestral oblations. He praises nobody, blames nobody, is never dependent on anyone. He has no need to repeat the mantra, no more need to practice meditation. The world of change and changeless reality are one to him, for he sees all in God. The aspirant who is seeking the Lord must free himself from selfish attachments to people, money, and possessions. When his mind sheds every selfish desire, he becomes free from the duality of pleasure and pain and rules his senses. No more is he capable of ill will. No more is he subject to elation, for his senses come to rest in the self. Entering into the unitive state, he attains the goal of evolution. Truly, he attains the goal of evolution. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti